Released in late 2012 alongside the iPhone 5, the 5th generation iPod Touch brought a much needed redesign to the iPod lineup and to this day is still the thinnest and lightest iOS device Apple has ever made. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech and today we're going to be taking a look at the iPod Touch 5th generation. How does it hold up in 2018? Briefly, before we get started here, I'll mention that I do have an Instagram and Twitter, and you should totally go follow me over there, links below. Also, I apologize for the lack of videos as of late. I got pretty sick for like a week there, but I'm good now, just in time for WWDC 18, so expect some good content on the way. And with that said, let's just get started. The iPod Touch lineup is something that's been slowly dying over the last few years, but back in 2012, it was riding high, filling the gap for those who didn't quite need or want a phone, but still desired the iOS experience at a lower price tag. The iPod Touch 4 had been a huge success, but in 2012, only two years after release, it was already starting to feel old, and so the iPod 5 was a much needed upgrade. It brought a somehow thinner and lighter body than the previous generation and had an all aluminum enclosure, quite similar to the iPhone 5 that was released the same year. The design is something that still looks and feels very good, to the extent that it was actually reused by the iPod 6 that was released three years later. It's fairly basic and comes in a few different color variations. Space gray, silver, pink, yellow, blue, red, and black and slate. There's something here for everybody, and that's really cool. You can see here I have the blue one. Um, by the way, this isn't mine, it's a friend's. And obviously it's been very well used over the years with the paint especially fading around the Apple logo. The display is pretty decent at a relatively small size of four inches and resolution of 640 by 1136 with 326 pixels per inch. While a four inch screen is typically a bit small for me, considering this is meant to be as portable as possible, I'm not gonna dock it any points. The small form factor is actually a positive, if anything, when it comes to iPods. This device, of course, features Apple's Retina display, so everything on the screen looks very clean and crisp with no visible pixels. It is absolutely acceptable in 2018, and especially so when you consider that it's already six years old. You may be wondering what the silver circle on the bottom corner of the back is, and well, it's a bit silly, but something Apple was really pushing back in the day. If you push on it, it'll pop out so you can attach Apple's loop thing to it. It's essentially like one of those old wrist straps you'd have on a digital camera, and I guess it was for those who planned on using their iPod as a camera. Not really sure why anyone would do that considering the iPod only had a 5 megapixel rear sensor that could technically shoot 1080p, although I wouldn't call it that. It just isn't great, and even for the time, I think digital cameras probably were a better option, but this was very light and very portable, and so I guess it made sense for some people. Of course, Apple did remove the strap with the iPod 6, so obviously it wasn't a huge success. Moving on, I've already described the back camera, but it also has a front facing camera with a 1.2 megapixel sensor and 720p video shooting capabilities. It doesn't look very good, to be honest. While I suppose this device doesn't have the worst camera in the world, considering it's from 2012, I think 8 megapixels would have been a really good choice, but hey, what are you gonna do? Now this is the part of the video where I typically show some pictures from the device, and I will do that, but briefly before, I need to mention that for some reason the iPod 5 actually had another version of it, a 16 gigabyte model that came in silver but didn't have a rear camera. It does, however, have a selfie camera. It seems kind of pointless, but Apple wanted a cheaper model for those on a budget, so this is what they came up with. It looks really weird, but hey, it was a thing. So if you're looking to get an iPod 5, maybe just double check that it has a rear camera and you should be good. Mind you, do you really need a rear camera on this, considering it's only 5 megapixels? I don't know, but anyway, here's some of the photos from the iPod Touch. This right now is being filmed on the iPod Touch 5th generation, and I mean, it looks pretty bad. I wouldn't use this as a camera. It's probably decent enough for the time, but definitely not in 2018. Battery life on the iPod is going to vary device to device, depending on how used it's been over the years, but in my experience, it's terrible. Not so much if you're just using it as a music player, but if you're actually living with this iPod, it's pretty bad. It was dying on me randomly a whole lot while I was filming, and that's probably just this device's problem, but even so, I know a lot of people have battery problems with the iPod 5, and it makes sense considering it only has a 1030 milliamp hour battery, and you're gonna probably have trouble getting through the day. Again, maybe that's just for me, 
but I've read a lot of other people having battery issues too, so it's something to keep in mind. When it comes to technical specifications, this is where the iPod 5 really starts to fall behind. Everything I've described so far has been fairly decent. Good design, good screen, disappointing camera, bad battery. In all honesty, most of that can be lived with. The bad battery thing, maybe not, but hey, if you get a portable battery case, it's probably not a huge deal. But this is where the iPod 5 shows its obsolescence. It only features Apple's A5 chipset and half a gigabyte of RAM, which isn't enough for 2018 and wasn't even great in 2012. These specs are shared with the iPhone 4S, and some of you probably know how the 4S turned out. The iPod 5 does run up to iOS 9.3.5, which is a pretty good amount of support to be honest, but the problem is that it doesn't have even close to enough power to run iOS 9. Everything is brutally slow, from turning on the device to just even opening multitasking. It's actually quite painful and something that's a real pity. Apple completely destroyed the iPod 5 with the iOS 9 update, and so that's really the biggest takeaway here. It's just ridiculously slow in 2018, and in 2017, and 2016, and ever since the iOS 9 update in 2015. Although, there is a benefit to having iOS 9. Most apps seem to support old iOS versions up to iOS 9, so believe it or not, this iPod can actually run the latest version of many apps today, like YouTube. But this will change with the official release of iOS 12 in September, when apps are going to start requiring iOS 10 and better. While you will still be able to download latest compatible software versions, it won't be the most convenient process in the world. So technically, as it is right now in 2018, the iPod 5 is surprisingly usable. While it's slow as molasses, it does run most things you'd want it to, and so I have to give it props for that. That's impressive. But I would never, ever, ever want to live with the iPod 5 in 2018. It's just not worth it, especially considering you can find an iPhone 5 or 5C for less than $50 on eBay. However, it would work as a music player, and so if that's something you need, then actually, if you can find a deal, I might go for it. Again, if you can find a deal, I would say there's better options for music players out there. If you're somehow stuck with an iPod 5 in 2018, or just wondering what you can do with it, it is jailbreakable, which is cool, and it is also possible to downgrade to iOS 8. It isn't the simplest process, but if you look it up online, you can pretty easily figure out how to do it. I've done it with my iPad mini, which is the same process, and honestly, it's not too difficult. From there, you'll have worse support, but at least it'll be a little bit faster, although it still doesn't run great on iOS 8. And with that, there isn't much else to say. The iPod 5 was really cool for the time, but in 2018, it lags behind as you would expect it to. It's six years old. You'd expect it to be slow, but I don't think you would expect it to be this slow. iOS 9 really hurt this device, and uh, that's something we shouldn't forget. The iPod Touch fifth generation was a really cool device. It was fun to play around with, but I think it's pretty fair to say it is indeed obsolete in 2018. And I think that's where I'm going to end this today. Did you ever have an iPod 5? Did you ever want one? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can always go follow me over on Twitter and Instagram because that'd be pretty cool of you. Links below. And I'm going to try a new thing today. If you've made it this far, you're obviously a pretty cool person. So hey, thank you. If you would like to help me and the channel out, I've come up with a way that is absolutely free for all of you. In the description is an Amazon referral link. If you bookmark it, I'll get a very small commission of any purchases you make on Amazon. It's a very small commission, mind you, but it does actually help. So maybe consider that, and uh, it would mean the world to me. So thank you very much for that. And I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.